here. Let's get all my lighting and stuff going. We got a little bit of technical difficulties going on. <clears throat> I want to talk to you guys. Who's up? Who's Adam? Who's around? Let's see. There we go. And then I think this is about as good a light as I'm going to get there. Let me just bring this a little closer. All right. We're live. We are live on the other side of the uh, earth. Uh, you guys are hopefully, let me see. I think it's, I don't know what time it is over there. It's like uh, we're 15 hours ahead. Who's joining me? Just pop in the chat, say what's up. We'd love to holler at you. This is Dom here. We're going to talk about purpose today. Uh, I know the CFP exam window just closed. So there are some of you that got the, give me a second here, I'm trying to navigate. There's some of you got the provisional pass and some of you didn't. Um, I heard a horror story, <clears throat> probably one of the worst that I've ever heard uh, about a CFP exam experience. And I have some insight on that, that, um, that we'll go over in just a second. But uh, go ahead and join in. We're going to be talking about this in just a second. I think um, <clears throat> you'll, be, you'll be inspired. And excuse me, my, I just, we, I'm over here with my family, and we've been spending, this is our, let's see, we got here Monday. Today's Friday, so this is our fifth day in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, my son is stationed over here, and so we all came over as a family just as a trip. It's been really good, but my point is, is I almost lost my voice yesterday screaming and yelling. <laughs> We had so much fun. <clears throat> so I'll be, I might be doing a little bit of that during this live, but uh, I see six of you joining. Like, let me know where you're joining from. I would love to hear from you. Uh, but we're going to talk some, talk some purpose today. Um, I got my laptop over here and I got the live chat going because I am streaming from my phone because that's the only, I'm, I'm like, my data plan is working a little bit better than the Wi-Fi. So hopefully will stay all connected. <laughs> that, that is the goal, okay? Uh, but, you know, it's 11 a.m. over here. Um, your neck of woods should be like 14 hours different. So we're Friday. You guys are Thursday Thursday night, I guess, over there, right? Yeah. So like 10, 10-ish at night. If you're up hanging with me, cool. I appreciate you. I just blasted a text out to my community. But let's get into this. So... <clears throat> I, um, we've been having this great time together, uh, me and my family, uh, my older, I have older children, they're, um, they're adults, so we're all traveling together, uh, but this has been really cool, uh, this experience over here, just, you know, being immersed in culture, uh, different culture than, obviously, than the United States, um, and just, you know, all the challenges that come with, with, with doing this, you know, we had a 15-hour flight, and when we got here, uh, we were tired, we were um, exhausted, actually, is probably the better word. And we still had to kind of find the Airbnb, and um, we had to, um, we didn't know Korean. We, I don't know Korean. Like, I, I know a little bit of Korean, like, kamsamdina, uh, which means uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm good at that, but that's just, just about it. You know, street signs and all this other kind of stuff, we're, we're, like, confused. So it took us, like, three tries to get to our Airbnb. We finally got here persevering through. Not unlike a lot of the things that you have done <clears throat> um, if you are a CFP exam candidate and you just took the exam. Um, there, The testing window was the 12th through the 19th of March. Um, so, you know, maybe three days ago you learned that you will be taking the exam again this summer. Or three days ago you realized that, hey, I'm done. I got this exam part out the way. Now I can move on to the next part. Like, the, you may have one of those two realities. Rather, you may be living in one of those two realities. Or you may have a third reality, which I guess is, I do want to take the exam, but I've heard so many horror stories about this thing. I don't, <laughs> I don't know that I want to subject myself to that, right? That could be your reality too. So regardless of where you are, I hopeful, hopefully will impart some wisdom and perspective for you today, um, which, you know, I think that's good. That's, that's helpful in today's society. So <clears throat> the, uh, the first thing I w w would want to say is that, um, so I was, I was chatting back and forth with a client and I was just kind of checking on him because I knew he was taking the exam and I knew he had been preparing for it and doing all these things. 
and I asked him, I was like, how did it go? And he proceeds to tell me that he had a horrible testing experience. Uh, his testing experience went something like he was there for almost 12 hours. And um, the, the testing center that he went to had a technological glitch and he lost his exam progress and he was down, it was down for like two and a half hours. Um, and he, he, at this point, did not get a provisional pass, does not know if he has to like retake the exam and, re well, obviously he has to retake the exam, but he doesn't know what the outcome's gonna be. He, he, um, he's um, like in this state of limbo where he has to send off to the CFP board what happened, all the you know, parameters of that and see if they would you know, possibly reimburse him and all this other kind of stuff, because his exam's not cheap. And it's like a, a grand to take the exam. Um, so, you know, I was just listening to this story and I was just like, God, that sucks. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to say this flippantly and not, not laughing about it, making light of it, but it, think about this. Think about wanting something really bad. Think about preparing for it for weeks and weeks and weeks and months and spending time away from your family and your job and the things that you would normally like to do or to enjoy doing to prepare for an exam and then have a scenario like this go down on you and you have to kind of like like regroup and bounce back even like in the midst of it like right you're trying to still maintain okay I got to this moment I studied I prepared I did all these things and things are not going my way and I, and I need to I need to get it together otherwise I'm gonna blow all this time that I spent um, preparing for it right like you go all that's going through your mind while you're trying to maintain formulas <laughs> and acrostics and, and all these things that, you know, that you've been learning. And that's difficult. And I think that would make you, that would make anyone, it would make me, it would make me question my purpose. I would definitely question my purpose. I would go, maybe this CFP thing is not for me. <laughs> I would go, I would say a lot of things other than that, but that would be one prevailing thought. Maybe, maybe this financial planner thing is not exactly what I'm supposed to be doing in life. Um, uh, the other thing is, how's my sound, by the way? I just thought about this because I got something else plugged in and I'm not. Hold on just a second. Let me let me just be sure. He was there for. OK, good. OK. Um, yeah, I, I may question whether or not the. The CFP is the route that I want to take. Maybe maybe there's something easier. Right. Maybe there's something easier that I should be doing. Um Maybe this is not for me. Maybe, maybe you know, it's like you're, you know, not your first try. It's your second or third try. And you're like, it's not meant to be. Like, I can see how, given the scenario I just gave you, that someone could think that way. I'd be curious, like, just throw in the chat if you are a CFP exam candidate. How did your experience go just a week ago or three days ago, rather? What was your experience? What did, what did you discover and or uncover. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate that. Yeah, good on sound. Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, if, if you if you had a CFP exam experience, I uh, would love to know about it um, and opine on it. Maybe maybe I have some insight for you. But just just imagine being in that scenario. It would make you want to question whether or not you're doing the right thing, whether or not all the preparation that you you know that you that you put in, that all the hard work, whether or not it was worth it. Um, and I think this is a lesson for life. Uh, I know I've been through it as a business owner. I've started two businesses. Um, I've, I've started, I'm running two businesses now. I've started more than two businesses, um, some of which are, have not been as successful as others. And so, you know, when, when you hit those points of failure, as we would call it, you often start thinking that this may not be the route for you. I'm going to do something. I'm going to start a poll uh, here. Give me just a second. Okay, this is a poll. I'm, um, 
going to start. And I want to hear from you guys on this question here. Because this is going to go into what we're going to talk about here. All right, there we go. So check out the poll while you're in the chat. Now, here's the deal. You, um, as a financial professional, as an aspiring, as a existing, as a um, thinking about it, you know, this might be a path. You know, you might be a career changer. Career changer and aspiring financial professional, I usually lump into the same bucket of people because, you know, that's just, just what it is. Or, or you may have already been doing this thing a while and, and maybe you decided on CFP, uh, that path. And what I would say to you is, um, this is something that I picked up a little while ago, and it's this, this notion of you get to choose your version of hard. What do I mean by that? Uh, well, most things in life that are worth having, whether that's relationship or um, success, however you define it, all these different things. These are, these are things that are worth having. They're equally as hard to obtain, though. Not in relation to each other, but like all things worth having are hard to obtain. You want a good relationship with a person? You have to remain curious about them. You have to um, continue to discover them. You have to accept their flaws and vice versa. Um, these are not easy things to do. Um, you want to pass the CFP exam, since that's the relevant topic here. Um, you need to put in probably 20 hours of stuff. You got to put in at least 250 hours of, of work before the exam to be successful, uh, as defined by most of the people that have passed the exam. Um, which looks like probably about three months of review, 20 hours a week at least. Um, these things are hard. But here's, the, here's that adage, though. You get, to, you get to choose your version of hard, which, which means just that. It means that, you know, I get to, I get to, and this is a phrase that you probably want to adopt whenever something is hard. I get to do this as opposed to something else. I get to put this benefit in for, or I get to put this work in for a, a future benefit. I get to learn about this person and expose myself and be vulnerable and da 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 da. I get to, I get to do these things. If you start with a, that type of mindset, it helps you get to this um, point where you feel in control versus out of control or like a victim. Um, while you're going through things, you know, I'm pretty sure my client, my friend that just took the CFP exam, I'm pretty sure that um, he could have adopted the victim mentality uh, from his, uh, from the back and forth in the text. It doesn't seem like he has. But the point is, is you could, you could very well be like, this is not fair. Like, why of all exams did my exam blow up? You know, like after all this time that I've done this and, you know, all the effort I've put in, why is this happening to me? Why, why, why? You could, you could take that approach. But you could also go, look, I chose this. I chose this path, adversity included, that I didn't even know about. I didn't know the adversity was coming to me. <laughs> I didn't have, no, I had a dose of adversity this morning. I just thought I was taking my exam. You know, so like those are things that happen and you choose that as opposed to other paths. Um, so I want to kind of impart uh, what I think you should what I, should, what I think you can do when circumstances don't pan out the way you want or they're a little bit out of control at the, at the, at the moment, whatever you may find yourself in, whether that is on your way to becoming a CFP, on your way to becoming a financial professional, on your way to growing your business to whatever you want it to grow to, finding the next promotion job, whatever you're, you know, just kind of fill in the blank there. Um, I want to give you this principle that I've talked about before, and I want to give you an example on how you can play it out, right? So I'm going to give you a principle, and I'm going to give you a practice, all right? So everything else has been introduction up until this point. <laughs> all right, so who is already a financial professional? We got five, We got 50% of you that are yes already. Good, okay. 
I wonder, are you thinking about the CFP exam or are you already CFPs? And then who's, who is, uh, um, who's our, and then we have no, we have some no's. And then we have some people thinking about it. Okay, so we got a good mix of people on the live, even though you guys are not as vocal as I would normally like. But it's all good. I get to choose my version of heart, right? I'm <laughs> eating my own medicine. Taking my own medicine, eating my own cooking. Okay, so what is the principle, Dominique? The principle is a not a new one. It's something I've talked about before that I picked up from one of my online mentors, the, the great Dr. Myron Golden. You guys should follow his stuff. Uh, but he's, he has really great insights, but he talks about a principle of be, do, have, which actually comes from the Bible. I'm not going to pull up the Bible verse. Maybe that's, you know, another time, another place, but, um, be, do, have, what does be, do, have mean? As a principle, uh, let me explain what it is not. It'll be the best, that's the best way I can explain it and have explained it in the past. You know, most people like in this particular case, they want the CFP. They want to have the designation of certified financial planner for what all it entails, all it means, all the things that you're able to do with it, how it can promote your career, on and on and on and on, right? But that's the last part, to actually have the designation. What you have to do in order to have the designation, I'm gonna silence my computer here because we got some back and forth family chat going on. Um, what what you have to do to get the CFP is you have to put in the hours of work and dedication. You know, let's talk about the four E's real quick. You got to have education, you got to have experience, you got to pass the exam, and you got to meet the ethics requirement. Those are the four E's that actually to, to be able to hold the marks and use those marks behind your name. And each of those four E's take effort on your part. These are the things that you have to do prescribed by the CFP Board of Standards in order to have the CFP designation in order to have those marks behind your name. Well, there's something you have to, uh, that has to be, um, that comes even before having and doing, having the CFP and doing the work. You have to be the person that will do the work. What do you mean by that, Dominique? Uh, there's a saying that says, um, all work works. It's either working on you or working for you. And if it's not working for you, it's working on you for you to become the person the work will work for. I know, it's a tongue twister, but just think about it real quick. It's either working on you or working for you. Like, you may be thinking it's working against you. Like, throw that out of your brain. All work works. It's either working on you like pressing you down, creating you it, to be the person that the work will work for, or it's working for you already. Like you put in the work, you've done all the things, and now you're able to kind of like bask in the, the, the brilliance of your work, right? So if it's not working for you, it is working on you to shape you into the person that the work will work for. And that applies with everything. So what I would say to you, my friend, friends, is that the be, do, have principle that we're talking about here. Don't start with what you want. Well, obviously start with what you want from an idea standpoint, right? Ideation, imagination, I wanna be a CFP, right? But then start to do the backwards math here of what it's going to take in order to get there, the things you're gonna to have to do, the activities that you're gonna to have to partake in, but then you have to even adopt the mindset that allows you to do the things that a CFP would do, a financial professional would do, right? Which means you're probably gonna have to hang around people that do it. You're gonna have to like, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel like, and get some of this good content. You know, maybe um, hire me as your coach, get into one of my programs or somebody else's. You know, I had somebody asking me on TikTok, uh, what is the best CFP exam prep? program like so things like that you have to you have to put yourself around the material you have to plant yourself around the type of people and material and resources and knowledge that are going to allow you to become the person that will do the things to have the outcome you want that's the order become the person that will do the things to have the outcomes that you want you can't take that out of order 
You can't speed along the process to circumvent that particular order. It is what it is. This is a law of nature. This is a principle that I'm trying to show to you that, that works in all of life with all things. Anybody that you've seen that has been successful in anything, just because you're seeing their success now and you never knew about them does not mean that they weren't in the backfield or in the background honing their craft for months and weeks, probably, maybe even decades. I uh, think about, um, in this regard, I think about Gary Vee and all the influence he has right now. But, you know, most people didn't know Gary Vee when he was, you know, in his 30s working in his dad's uh, liquor shop or uh, wine shop, you know, and responding to people. Twitter questions about different wines, you know, hours into the night, hours into the morning. Like, that was what he was doing. He tells this story all the time. And nobody knew who he was. He's making like fit less than 50 grand a year, saving all his money. And then he went to South by Southwest uh, one summer and met some people that basically changed the trajectory of his life for the next 10 years. But he had already been doing the work. And so when he got into those conversations at South by, South by, South, <laughs> South by Southwest, I'm sorry, this is a conference in, in Austin that happens every year that a lot of tech people go to, just in case you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, they just had one. They just had one, you know, like two weeks ago. Uh, but my point here is by the time he showed up at that conference, he had already been doing the things and becoming the Gary Vee that we know. And so when he was exposed to some people that were in, at, at a different level than him, he was able to navigate that. See, a lot of people want to be in those spaces, but they're not prepared to be in those spaces. There's conversations that happen at those spaces at a different level. I remember when I went to Vid Summit last October and met my current video coach. Shout out to, to Owen Hemis, uh, uh, Owen Video, uh, as you guys know him. Um, Owen Hemsmath, Hems, Hems, Hemsath. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say his last name. I know it. Um, great guy, great story. You guys should follow his story on Instagram and Facebook and all the other places he is. But the, here's the point. Um, I went to that conference with the idea of the following. I have a wealth management business, but I didn't go there to find clients. Um, I have a coaching business. I didn't necessarily go there to find clients. I went there to submerge myself around people that do video content creation as a living as a and make a good living at it like i'm like to the tune of seven and eight figures a year uh some of them seven figures a month and i was a listening to the conversations about the ideas that they have around creating video and creating content and how they reach the audience and the different things that they think about when it comes to sponsorships and all these different things. And I'm here as a financial professional, probably one of the few there, um, that was just submerging myself, fish out of water, trying to learn and ab absorb what was going on. Just being in a different space, exposing myself something to, to something different because what I'm trying to do in my businesses as a content creator, I didn't have that. So I went to an environment that has that. So then I can start to pick up what they said and start doing the things so I can have the outcome that I want. So no different than anybody else there. What's up, Smooth Jazz? You're thinking about the CFP. Pardon the interruption, everybody. I'm going to get right back to what we were talking about, but I want to acknowledge Brian C. Currently in the CFP program at SMU. Oh, cool. Uh, you, you're going to definitely run across Miss uh, Trudy Turner then. Trudy Turner is a, a dear friend of mine. Tell Trudy I said hello, uh, Brian. Uh, I think she teaches the capstone still. Trudy's a great person, great financial professional. Um, do everything she says, <laughs> which you're probably doing already. You're probably doing everything she says. So you're in a good program there. Um, I'm trying to think of the program director there. I can't remember his name right. I've met him once or twice in passing. His name actually might be Brian too. Uh, very striking man. Um, large guy, bald head, black guy. Uh, you probably know him. I can't think of this. I think his first name is Brian. Anyways, all right, I digress. So, be do have principle. 
In order to have the outcome you want, you have to do the things required for that outcome, but first you have to become the person that will do the things to have the outcome you want. Now, what is the practice that goes with that? Brian Jackson, yes, Brian Jackson, that's right. He's a great guy too. I met him, uh, oh my gosh, long story, but anyways, we were, we were at an outing for a vendor and that's where I met him uh, in passing. I think I've met him you know, on LinkedIn and stuff like that too, but like in person, I was able to see him. Uh, but yeah, he's a program director. He's a great guy too. Um, do everything he says. Anybody that already has something that you want, do everything they say. <laughs> and pay them if necessary. This is a saying of mine. <laughs> That's the, it's called leverage. I don't know why people, more people don't employ it. Okay. Uh, what is a practice that you can apply or use with this principle? Glad you asked, and then we'll close it up after this. I wanted to kind of leave this at 30 minutes. I don't know if we have time for Q&A. Uh, we'll see. Um, here's the deal. Serving others. Yeah, I know. Probably not what you thought. But think about it. Financial services, at the heart of that compound phrase that encompasses our industry, industry what do you see in the word services? You see the word serve. Financial services, I mean, yeah, you can make a great living. You can do a lot of great things You can um, for yourself, I mean. But you can't really have any of those things unless you help enough people, serve enough people. So you're, you're in a great industry, or thinking about it if you, if you haven't uh, made the leap yet, but it's about serving others. And this is true of just about every other industry that, you know, where you can have success. There's very few off to the side, um, you know, I'm on an island like Tom Hanks and Castaway and I'm just doing my thing and I'm being really successful and I'm not really helping anybody. I don't sell any products. I don't sell any services. I have no deliverables. I just do things my, on my own and everything just comes to me. It's, nothing really works like that. Like if, if you can name something, like I would, I would indulge the argument here, but uh, there's nothing. Uh, so everything, when you're talking about success, you know, uh, let's, in this list, just be real, monetary success, right? Um, if you're valuable to other people, you will in turn receive probably exponentially more value than you dispense out. This is typically how things work. Um, and so what I would say to you, um, you know, to the person that was taking the CFP exam and it blew up in their face, um, by way of now you have to take it again if you, if you choose to go that route because you didn't pass. Uh, and, and you really have your heart dead set on being in an industry where you can make impact, change family trees, allow people to uh, r realize their dreams, their hopes, their desires uh, by way of creating great financial plans and uh, giving them great advice and strategy. Go for it. Like choose your version of hard. This is a this is a great hard to choose, and it will be well worth it. Like not only the monetary rewards, but also the the fulfillment you get from sitting in the sacred seat of, of advisor to these people that you help, the people that you're called to, right? And, and keep the mindset of service. That is the practice. Keep the mindset of service the, the entire way out. Even when you only have like one client, serve them like, well, they're, they're going to be your only client. So like you will serve them like nobody's business. But even when you get to 100 clients or 150 clients or whatever you decide to build your practice to, serve all those people as if it's your last time and as if they are the only client. They'll notice it. They might not always say it, but they will notice it. They will feel it. They, they will feel the, the impact. I've had so many compliments over the years of what my clients say the interaction is with working with me. Um, and it's always very fulfilling to hear those things, um, but they don't come without a price. Um, I'm usually giving up something in order to pour into them as just the trade that you choose to make uh, in this industry. All right. So be, do, have. And as a principle, that's that's the principle, but serve others. Definitely. That, that needs to be your mantra. 
So um, if let me give you a couple of uh, housekeeping things. So I'm going to end the poll right here. Uh, yeah, there we go. So um, if you want more of this kind of stuff, you, first of all, you should be subscribed to the YouTube channel. That's, a, that's the no-brainer that is the no-brainer of the day. Um, you should be subscribed to the YouTube channel. Uh, now, here's my disclaimer that I have been typically making as I do these videos and create this content. Um, I typically have a pretty, what I would call loose versus tight filter on what I say and do on these platforms. However, I'm not, I'm not ignorant, right? I don't want to bite the hand that feeds me. Like I know there's certain things you can't say in the industry because I, like, I still like to go around and speak at conferences and not be, uh, I don't want to be blackballed. <laughs> <laughs> because of what I say about the broken dealer, right? And all that kind of stuff. So I have to watch some things that I say and who I talk about on these platforms. But inside of my community that you can subscribe to via email, no holds barred. I can say what I want with, with my pen in hand, with my proverbial pen in hand via email. So like one of the best things for you to do, and I'm going to paste it into the chat, is to get on the email list. Uh, the email list will kind of let you know everything that I'm doing um, from a, a, let's call it support of financial professionals standpoint. Um, there's a way that I can, oh, you know what I need to do? Give me a second. Um, yeah, so all the things that I'm doing in that regard will be on the, what I would call the email list, right? It is the community that is, what's going on here? Why can't I make comments on my own video? I'm having issues here. Oh, here we go. Um, so I just, I just put that in the chat. Let me see if I can pin it actually. Give me a second. Uh, pin, okay, great. So I've just pinned how you can get on the email list. But anyways, the, the support that you may need as a aspiring financial professional trying to get into this industry, trying to learn what you need to know without the filter of someone trying to get something from you, right? Like a lot of these companies, which I won't name names of now, they recruit you and they give you this pitch. I just, I was just talking to a client the other day and they were telling me of this story <laughs> that a recruiter was telling him on, in, in, you know, just giving him the whole spiel and, and then the supervisor of the recruiter came in and gave him a different spiel. But the, here's the deal. My client already knew what they were going to say because he's been following me. We've been working together for years. He's been in the community for years and, and he's, we've been working together. So he already knew ahead of hand, uh, beforehand, like what they were going to say. And like he was just breaking their conversation down. And so I, I thought that was kind of funny. But the, here's the point. Um, since he was hanging around, I was able to, you know, I was able to give him the scoop. I was able to give him the 411. Uh, I, I was able to spill the tea to him about how this industry works. Therefore, he wouldn't be taken advantage of. And that's the things that people get when they get on the email list is because at the end of the day, I believe that there's a set of group, there's a set of people that you are called to that I'm not called to. And rather than build this big gargantuan firm with billions of under, man, under management, which would be great, by the way, because you know the residuals on that is so fun, and like I would probably, I would probably not be on this live right now teaching you anything, if I had a billion dollar firm. But that was not my path. My path was to take the knowledge I know that I've developed over the last 26 years in this industry and share it with you, so that you can go out and be impactful to the the your tribe, the people that you're called to that I would never reach, because you're called to them or Ryan's call to somebody else uh, and Brian's call to somebody else. And that's why we don't have to be like jealous and envious and overly competitive, uh, you know, you know, knives facing in, uh, in this industry because there's plenty to go around for the people that are doing the right thing. That's what I just believe. So all that to say, 
you should get on the email list because we're talking about this kind of stuff all the time. And I'll, you'll get notified if you put your phone number in that, um, you'll get a notification. Like all my, all my, all my, my tribe, all like, it's like 650 people on my uh, text list got a, a notification when I was about to go live for this. You may be one of those if you're watching. So you get those those type of things, and I'm always doing really cool stuff. Like we got a, we got some really cool things coming down the pipe for the second quarter. Uh, some technology that I've been building in the background for financial professionals that will help you increase your leads, uh, win more business, um, and keep your clients happy and loyal to you, um, and simplify your life, right? Because as financial professionals, you know, we start growing and we get, you know, big books of business and, and it, it creates more work. Like we got to hire staff and become managers instead of financial professionals. And it's not to say there's nothing wrong with that model. It's just some people don't want that. So what if you could have a technology, a, uh, a tech stack that complemented your style of doing business in this industry um, that, that all talk together? I like to call it the holy trinity. Uh, so that so that you would be more efficient. So we're going to be talking about that when I get back from uh, Korea, uh, first part of April. So that's the reason why you need to be on the email list because you would know about that event and you would be invited to that event because it's only for like 50 advisors because my beta group is going to be small, intimate, and um, efficient, like Navy SEALs type of people. So uh, we're going to publicly release it probably sometime in the summer. But for all the people that are you know, that want to be in the beta group, that want to be uh, first adopters, that will, you know, get um, preference on some features and um, requests, techno technological improvement requests of this kind of stuff, all that kind of stuff. So all that to say, get on the email list because there's plenty there uh, in that regard. Let's see. Uh, I can I can read a couple of comments and then, um, then I'm going to move around because I'm on vacation, y'all. <laughs> Uh, let's see. E. Witty says, thank you for all you do, sir. I remember watching you over a year ago when I was getting ready to interview. Now I'm practicing as an advisor and I love it. Well, cool, man. Thank you for saying that. Um, I'm assuming E. Witty, I don't know if E. Witty is a, is a male or female. So um, please pardon my thank you, man, that I just said. I'm just, you know, kind of gender neutral there. Um, but no, I'm, I'm glad that you found the channel. I'm glad that the information was helpful and um, has allowed you to get to where you need to be. Of course, you've obviously persevered and done a lot of stuff on your own, but thank you for the kudos. I appreciate it. Uh, Ryan says, EJ or Nor <laughs> Ryan, you're being messy. Look at you being messy. You're trying to get me to name names, man. I am not naming names today. That is not one of those days. <laughs> But nice try. Thank you for trying to bait me. <laughs> uh, yes, Brian. Yes, I agree. Right. It's millions of people for all of us to serve. Yes, exactly. We don't have to be. We don't have to worry about competition here. Um, I, I agree totally. Millions. Uh, yeah, this is one way to think about it. Um, I did a live stream about this um, maybe a few weeks ago. But I read this article in Financial Planning and it was talking about, you know, where the wealth, it's like basically two thirds, something like that, 60 to 70%, somewhere in that neighborhood uh, where six firms control all the AUM. And let's just, for, I know there's different ways to charge for financial planning and financial advice, but let's just use AUM just, you know, cause it's easy. Um, and here, here was my question to the audience was, why would you want, I can see why you would, so let me rephrase that. Um, if, if six firms control two thirds, let's just call it two thirds of the AUM that there is to be managed, do, do you think that it's easier to partner with them to go into that, what I would call a red ocean of competition to compete for two thirds to, for that, that number? Or would you be satisfied with going after the remaining third to 40% that is not controlled by those six firms. And that you have to decide, do, you, do I want to go with the flow? You know, let's say matriculate and um, get into that where 
You know, there's a lot of bad things that come with that and some good things, but th there's a lot of bad that comes with it. The fact that they haven't reinvested in their training in the last two decades, as the article said, that, that's one bad thing. Uh, the fact that they try to make you look all the same as a financial professional, the fact that they, you know, lord and levy compliance so heavy on you that you can't have your own voice. I mean, there's just like a laundry list of things versus being an entrepreneur, being on your own, trying to do your own thing and, and getting your own brand out there, like your brand of financial advice that somebody wants to hear. And that, you know, I would argue 50 to 125 families is probably plenty for you if you're in the right structure, it's the right structure to make a really great living for yourself and some impact and, and have impact. It's, it's doable. Like I, I'm teaching people to do this in my RIA Launch Academy all the time, all the time. It's not hard to open your own firm. It's not hard to create a personal brand. It's not, well, hard in the sense of undoable or impossible. Yes, it takes some work, absolutely. But you know, it's, you can do it. So um, I, like I said, I'm teaching people how to do this all the time. I, I just think it's a, it's a better path. It's just a better path to go independent. Um, these big brands are there. And, and, you know, yeah, a lot of people, because of the age of the financial services industry, which is no more than 60 years old, it's very close to, you know, it's like 55 years old, um, there hasn't been brand awareness around financial advice. And there's a lot of biases and stuff like there. Uh, so that's, that's another podcast for another day. But the point is, um, in, in 20 more years, not even, in 20 more years, Financial advice, the financial professional will be even more ubiquitous than what you call it now and what you see of it now. Just, just think about cell phones. Just think about any technology that has evolved over the last 25 years or so. It's gotten better. And so this will be no different. Um, and you're very much on the ground floor if you launch an independent firm and brand it properly. There's a lot of friends that I have that are doing this the right way. There's so many examples of how to do this. Just in the last five to 10 years, let alone when I came in the business, it, it was you know still kind of unheard of. But like you have so many people that you can emulate to do this successfully, it's not even funny. There's no reason to attach yourself to a, a Byzantine, outdated, draconian brand that is going to um, put their brand of how financial advice um, should be done over you so much so that it's going to constrain the way that you are as a person. I've seen it happen that you just kind of suffocate you. So anyways, um, Alonzo, what's up? The all-star advisor salute my friend. Hey, Sean, what's up, man? What are you, y'all still up over there? <laughs> I'm in South Korea. I'm in Seoul. Uh, in, about to go have some time with the family, uh, which is the reason why I'm going to get off here. Uh, oh, you say you did. Yeah, okay, you weren't. You really weren't. You just curious. Okay, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about those people another time. Maybe when it, maybe when I get back, I'll do a good do a podcast on uh, why you don't want to go with the big brands. Maybe something like that. Once you guys let me know in the chat whether or not you want to hear about that. That 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 could be some. Why you don't want to partner with the big brand? Why and why? Let's see. Why and why not? you would partner with a big brand, a big financial services firm. Financial services firm, yes or no? I don't know, I have to think about that. Give, give that some more time to ideate and kind of percolate in my brain about what that would be. Uh, I have to think about the nice salacious title that would be click worthy. <laughs> yes. Um, Should you work for your mom and dad's financial advisor? Five reasons yesterday's financial firm, financial services firm. No, that, that's too long already. You guys see how my brain works? This is how my brain works. You guys got me off on a rabbit trail. Now I'm trying to think about titles for the next video. All right. Two quick questions. What is a good alternate designation if CFP was not an option? What is another designation to build upon the CFP? Uh, two great questions. I'll answer those real quickly. Um, the CHFC, Chartered Financial Counselor, 
uh, I'm sorry, Chartered Financial Consultant is um, CHFC is offered by the American College. Very similar, if you compare them side by side in the CFP curriculum, is this that you take a comprehensive exam. Oh, well, sorry, it's a better way to say that. So CFP is one large comprehensive exam over all the material, whereas you pass, I wouldn't call it exam, I call it more like a test after each. I think there's, excuse me, seven modules in the CHFC also. So there's no comprehensive exam. There's like a mastery, if you will, checkpoint after you finish each uh, part of the CHFC. So, it, but it's basically the same curriculum. Now it's not as recognized, not as popular with the facing public. So that's a lot of reason why people opt for the CFP. So that, that is something, but as far as the knowledge, the body of knowledge, uh, the domain of what you're going to learn, very similar. Uh, another designation to build upon the CFP, um, I don't. I wouldn't say generically what that would be. I would say, what is your path? Like I've done a video on this, like my logic maps. I think you were around, Sean, when I when I came up with the logic maps. And this basically, let's this is branch out four pretty typical domains uh, that that are encompassed in financial advice. So we got insurance, we got tax, we got investment, and we got. Um, Let's call it estate planning, asset protection. Uh, let's call it more estate planning. So there are designations for all four of those verticals or domain, if you will, that you can go into depending on what you like. So uh, even Michael Kitsis says this. He's like, start with the CFP and start practicing and then see what you like. And there's, you know, obviously different offshoots, like if you want to work for with special needs or if you want to do um, divorce care or you know, things like that. Like there's just different stuff. So I don't think that there's one particular designation that after you do the CFP, do this one next. I don't have that in my mind. I have, what is your specialty? What do you want to be known for? Where do you want to have the most impact? What do you want to get paid for? Like your knowledge in exchange for dollars, um, where do you want to go? I have a buddy in my mastermind that has CFP and now uh, he's doing, he's studying for the EA because he's doing a bolt. He's bought a tax practice and he's bolted it onto his existing practice. Um, and he wants to leverage that. So he wants to be able to be able, uh, he wants to have the EA designation, uh, for the fact that his firm will be preparing tax returns. So all that to say, I think your special is whatever you decide. There's not just like one particular one. Uh, Try the pizza and the barbecue. Okay, yeah, we've had the chicken. The fried chicken over here is something out of this world. Like, I don't even know what we called it, but we went to Lottie World yesterday. I'm sorry. It, for anybody who's watching, I'm currently in South Korea with my family, and so I've just transitioned based on Ryan's comment here. <laughs> uh, but we haven't had Korean barbecue. We're going to have that. But Korean fried chicken, good stuff. Like, we haven't had a bad meal over here, by the way. Like, the food is just great. I'm a foodie. I love to cook. I love to eat. Uh, so it's like right up my alley. Um, but yeah, we will, we will, we'll try the pizza. We're, we're here until next, um, Wednesday. We fly out next Wednesday, uh, back to Dallas. So we have some time. Thank you though. Ryan, if you have any specific spots, uh, I'm going to shut down the live stream. So if you don't put it in here real quick, then I won't get it, but once you uh, DM me on one of the platforms that we're connected on or text me or something like that, I would love to see if you have a recommendation. We went to this place, um, and I put it in my Facebook story, uh, Instagram story. We went to this place called the, the Ramen the ramen Noodle Truck or the Ramen Truck. Oh, man, it was so good. Like, no ramen you've ever had in the U.S. compares to this. The broth was just... It was very good. Let's put it that way. So, uh, uh, you say yes, do, let's yes, do a talk on that. Like what firm we should work for or the, you know, the pros and cons of the avant guard of financial firms. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that would be interesting. Uh, 
Oh, okay, Ulsan. I don't know where that is in relation to Seoul. Like, I, I haven't mastered the geography over here yet. So, we're in um, we're in Mapogu, Mapogu, M A P O G U, uh, which is kind of uh, southwest of Seoul, uh, if you will. So yeah, we are enjoying it. It is very interesting and um, fun over here, to say the least. All right, I'm about to hop off, guys. Um, hopefully, this has been helpful. Uh, pop on the, the the email list, like we talked about, and um, good luck on your journeys. Um, some of some some of your journeys I know a little bit more about than others, but good luck to you all. <laughs> whatever you whatever you plan on doing unless unless it's bad things but if you're if you're with me at almost um 10 o'clock u.s time then you're probably not trying to do bad things so that that's a good thing oh it's in the southern part of south korea koreans are a lot of fun yes they are like it, i'll tell you this one quick, quick i think i had the um i didn't i didn't film all of it but so we went to um Starfield Mall, Mall, my daughter's helping me here. Starfield Mall, and you know they have this huge library cases, uh, bookcases for in the library, and, and this guy just like randomly comes up to us. Debe, is it Debe? Yeah. Debe comes up to us and just like starts talking to us, wants to take pictures with us, like he's just <laughs> he called me handsome. Debe called me handsome, uh, but yeah, we got to meet him. So just like people just over here are just super friendly. It's just so many just little idiosyncrasies about how things are done over here. Everything's super clean uh, compared to the U.S. Um, I mean, just everything, just you know, bathrooms and streets and everything is just super clean. Uh, but it has been um, really fun, to your point, Ryan. Yes, Koreans are a lot of fun. I would agree. South Koreans. South Koreans are really fun. North Koreans. Um, yeah. Res I reserve judgment there. All right. Well, gentlemen, but I don't know that any ladies have joined us unless E. Witty was a female uh, with a really, really great um, comment and kudos. So, all right. Very good. I will see you guys. Um, this will probably be my last live stream while I'm over here uh, because I want to spend time over here <laughs> enjoying it. But we'll, we'll get something together when I get back, um, possibly on the topic of um, what you don't know about big firms that might hurt you. Ooh, somebody write that down. This is where I need my VA. What you don't know about big financial firms that might hurt you. Because that would be applicable to not only you guys uh, in the industry or wanting to get into the industry, but also people that are looking to work with those firms. Right? Mm, I like that. I have to sit. I have to sit and let that marinate a little bit. I, I think that might be a good one. What you don't know about big firms that may hurt you. You guys like that topic? Thumbs up. All right. Well, good night. Um, and you can you can. Um, what a minute. What does that say? I'm I'm sorry. I got distracted. I'm reading through comments here. I think I missed a couple. Okay. All right, very good. See you guys later. See you when you get back to that when I get back to that.